So you've got your home lab running, maybe a few Docker containers, a NAS, some self-hosted apps, but how do you know when something goes down at 3 a.m.? You probably don't until you need it and realize it's been offline for hours. That's why I'm setting up Uptime Kuma. It's this really clean open source monitoring tool that keeps tabs on all your services. You get a nice dashboard showing what's up or down. You can have it ping you on Discord, email you right when something breaks. I'm going to walk you through getting it running in your own home lab. All you really need is a small Linux server such as a VPS. I'm going to go ahead and get one created for myself and I will see you guys in a bit. Once you guys have a VPS created or have your own Linux server stood up, all you really need to do is go ahead and SSH into the terminal, which we have already done here. And the first things first that we always do in most of our videos videos is we need to install Docker. So the link to this will be in the description below. We have installed Docker engine on Ubuntu. Scroll down just a little bit, set up Docker's APT repository. Just go ahead and copy that command open up our terminal, paste that in and press enter. Let that finish. Once that is done, go back to the Docker documentation, scroll down just a little bit more and you'll see to install the latest version, run this. It'll install Docker, compose the CLI and everything that it needs to run Docker. So go ahead and copy that, go back to the terminal, paste that in and press enter. It'll ask you to confirm, go ahead and press Y enter and let that finish. Once that is done, we can confirm that we do have Docker installed by typing in Docker space dash V and press enter. As you can see, we have Docker version 29.0.0 and then we should be good. So what we will want to do next is go ahead and go back to our browser and go to the base GitHub page of Uptime Kuma. This will also be in the description below. So go ahead and scroll down just a little bit and we will be using Docker Compose for this because I prefer using Docker Compose rather than a uh, Docker run command. Just a little bit easier to read. We're going to copy all of this actually and paste that in and press enter should all be set up for you and it's actually going to go ahead and docker up it's going to bring up that container and then detach it so it's going to make the directory called uptime kuma it's going to change your directory to uptime dash kuma the curl dash o is downloading the file from the raw.github user content and then it's creating the file named compose.yaml and then the next command is actually starting that container up so once we see created and started, all we have to do is docker space PS and press enter. And we can see it's up, it's healthy, and it's on port 3001. So what we need to do is grab our IP by doing IP space A and press enter. And then we'll see the NIC ETH zero, yeah, the zero. And we're gonna copy that IP, go to our browser, new tab, and then colon 3001 and press enter. There we go. We get the startup page or the setup page for Uptime Kuma. And let's go ahead and read a couple of things. So language English, which database would you like to use? I personally recommend uh, MariaDB or MySQL, um, but for this tutorial, we're gonna use SQLite. It's just a little bit easier to work with. And then as you can see, a simple database file recommended for small scale deployments. And if we go here, it lets you set up a few more things and you should be able to set it up externally and internally if you run your own MariaDB or MySQL uh, database container. But for this tutorial, we're gonna do SQLite and press next. It's gonna set up the database, so we'll just wait a little bit. And then we have create your admin account. So let's go ahead and name it admin, type in a random password and press enter. And there we go, we are in Uptime Kuma. So it's actually pretty easy to set up and we need something to monitor. So let's actually go ahead and go back here. We are actually going to go ahead and set up a quick web server and it's going to be this. This command will be in the description below if you guys want to do the same, but you should actually use it for your actual home lab stuff. So Python 3 dash M the uh, HTTP server on port 8000. We'll just press enter. And then as we can see, it is serving HTTP on port 8000. So if we actually go here, take this IP again, paste that in port 8000. We'll see that we have a very simple web server uh, running and it's just serving the files of the directory that we are in. So we want to we want to monitor this. We want to know when it's offline. We want to make sure it always stays online, right? So let's go ahead and remember this. We don't need to copyright. Actually, we can go and copy and we can just edit the string. So let's go to our uptime Kuma, click add new monitor, HTTP or HTTPS, friendly name, web server, dash broad, why not? The URL, paste that in. And then we have a little bit of extra settings. So we have the heartbeat interval, the retries, um, request timeout, recent notification. And then we also have the advanced section, which you can do certificate, 
uh, expiration notifications. You can ignore TLS SSL, SSL errors. You can add the uptime Kuma cache buster and this apparently random uh, generated parameter to skip caches. That's actually pretty cool. And then you have upside down mode, which pretty much flips the status upside down. If it up, if it's up, it says it's down. If it's down, it says it's up. That is pretty much it. Now we can set up a notification. Like I said, they have so many integrated options. Uh, the easiest one that I've been able to find is probably using Discord. You can just do a rev hook URL and it's actually very simple to do. And I can actually show you guys a quick way to do that. Open up Discord really quick. So here we have Discord open and we're just going to right click this channel that we just created and do edit channel. Now is it edit channel? It should be. Let's see. Integrations webhook right here. So let's create a webhook. Captain hook. Why not? Copy the webhook URL. Go here. Paste that in. Bot display name. For now, we're going to call it. Let's call it uptime Kuma. Copy that and click save changes. Escape back here and paste that in. And that's pretty much it. Should work instantly, uh, mostly with this Discord webhook URL and click save. And now it's up. So let's click save. As we can see, it's going to check that site and it says it's up. That's actually great. 200, it's a HTTP uh, code for, you know, the status is good. It's okay, it's up. What we wanna do is go to our terminal and actually close that server. So now the server should close. Uptime Kuma should register and see that the server is actually down. And then once it's down, we should get a notification in Discord. So let's go ahead and wait for that to happen. So as you can see, just now after 60 seconds, it checked. Uptime Kuma saw that the web server was down. And then in Discord, we can see that your service web server dash prod went down. It serves the service URL, the time and the error it connection, connection refused to the, you know, the server IP and the port. So that is pretty much Uptime Kuma. There's a lot more things you can do with it. Have fun with it. I know I will. I'm going to get this set up for my own personal home lab. If you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments below and I'll catch you guys in the next one.